What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. What the fuck? So I just watched NBC Fight Night, and I got to tip my hat off to main events, NBC. I thoroughly enjoy myself. And I definitely feel sorry for the quote-unquote boxing fans who don't appreciate boxing entirely, and you only kind of look for the high-profile fights, the big, the Mayweather, Maidanas, Bradley, Pacquiao's. I mean, those are all great fights as well, but... Oftentimes, you can watch Friday Night Fights or, you know what I mean, the main events, a smaller scale card, and you're pleasantly surprised. This was that card for me. Um, just a lot of heart, rounds of the year, fight of the year type fights. Um, and I'm not putting it on thick. These, I mean, these were, this was a solid card, and I didn't have to pay pay-per-view numbers or anything. So, in the first bout, Curtis Stevens against Toriano Johnson. Hellacious fight. I mean, this shit was caveman-esque, barbaric, very primitive. It was just pure violence. And it was fought at an insane pace. Now, the ending was controversial because it appeared to others, including myself, that Johnson was in the lead. He was doing more. He was out-hustling, out-working. Curtis Stevens, who did some good things in there, and he was landing some good shots. And he was kind of fighting in spurts, kind of similar to how... Canelo fights at times, not necessarily against Angulo, but if you watch some of the other Canelo fights, Canelo versus um, Austin Trout would be a good example of this. And I never understood that unless the guys are just maybe too muscular or they fatigue. But I didn't understand why Curtis Stevens was fighting in spurts. Well, knowing boxing, I know one of the reasons. One of the reasons is early on, he let Johnson just pretty much walk him down and back him up against the ropes, back him to a corner. And Johnson was just coming out swinging. He was, he, he's the type of rugged type of fighter where he doesn't care about finesse. He's not rigging now. He's not Mayweather. He doesn't give a fuck about looking pretty. He's a tough guy and he's going to land punches. Some of them look like slapping punches. Some of them look like accurate punches. Some of them are rabbit punches. Some hit your arm. Some deflect off your head, off the temple. Wherever he can land, he's landing. Kind of similar to Robert Guerrero, but I would say Guerrero was even more precise and um had a higher accuracy in terms of picking his shots than um toriano johnson but the thing with toriano johnson is that has the ability to frustrate and throw off of someone's game plan like curtis stevens because if you look at curtis stevens he's used to his power just being the end-all be-all you know what i mean having that that mighty thor type left hook um and he usually gets people's respect just off that. They're like, oh, shit. Like, you know what I mean? I don't want to deal with this. But to the contrary, Toriano Johnson was hanging in there. And he was backing up Curtis Stevens. And he was taking shots. He was taking, Toriano Johnson was taking some shots. And when I say round of the year, round, I think it was four or five, is perhaps the round of the year. I mean, this was a crazy, hellacious fight where they were throwing some, like, punches with bad intentions. They wanted to fuck each other up. So if you missed it, I feel sorry for you. I put the stoppage on my Instagram, at Boxing Ego. So go to Instagram if you have an Instagram account. It was controversial. Um, I see both sides, to be honest. And I'm not just saying that because Curtis Stevens is my dude, because I just did an interview with them. I've done a couple interviews with them. I really see both sides. And it's because, at one, you could look at it, and you could say Toriano Johnson was doing a lot of great stuff. He was winning rounds. He was ahead on the scorecards. He was ahead on my scorecard. And I don't know what you guys think when I do these interviews and whatever. Fair is fair. And that's what I'm about. So I had Toriano Johnson winning the fight if he didn't get stopped. But he did get stopped. But anyway, check out my Instagram to watch the stoppage. I mean, it could go both ways. And it's ultimately up to the referee. I see the side of Toriano Johnson was looking good and doing good things in there. And he was taking those types of shots early. So when he got rocked in the tw in the tenth round, excuse me, um, people wanted to see him get a little bit longer to regroup. But on the contrary, I don't think it's as controversial as some people are stating. I mean, I wish it, it ended in a more controversial and you you let the Johnson um, go out on the shield if that's what was going to happen, or let him survive the round, whatever. But if you notice when he caught that left hook, that was a telling punch. Like that was probably a, a more flush cleaner shot than anything Stevens had landed throughout the fight because Stevens wasn't really letting his hands go he was kind of fighting in spurts 
even the fourth or fifth round or whatever it was where it was um, back and forth, rough and tumble. I mean, that was a flush shot. And you can literally see Toriano Johnson's head go from the right to left, like really quick, like bow bow. And he was hurt. You know what I mean? It looked like he disconnected. If you look at his eyes, his shit went out for a second, just like clunk clunk, and then went back on. He was fucked up. And then Curtis tried to catch him again as he was backing up, but he just kind of caught the tip of his chin. And Curtis Stevens did what a trained fighter, a professional fighter is supposed to do. You're behind on the scorecards. You have your man hurt. You have the opportunity. You fight with your motherfucking heart and let those hands go. You know what I mean? You have to go for broke. And that's exactly what Curtis Stevens did. And the thing with boxing is as much as you could say, what if Toriano Johnson It's his job to respond and to respond quickly enough with enough authority to let the ref know that, hey, I'm still in the fight. Give me a second. And you just have to have that quick processing time. You have to think quick, grab and hold, which is something a lot of fighters don't do. And if you don't do it, this is what you stand the chance of getting stopped. Um, same thing with John Molina Jr. He was getting outboxed thoroughly by Mickey Bay. And that's my dude, too. I've interviewed John Molina, um, talked to him. But he was getting outboxed. He was beat. He was being dominated. And to me, people use certain terms like dominate. They use it too firmly. I don't think Curtis Stevens was anticipating having a, as tough a fight as he was. But by no means, in my opinion, was he being dominating. He was losing rounds, but he wasn't being dominated. Dominated is, like if, like I said, even Mickey Bay versus John Molina, to me, that was more of a dominant. Sergio Martinez versus Chavez Jr. And by dominant... I say it in those particular fights because if you look at the Chavez Jr. fight, he was actually kind of rendered helpless until that 12th round. He wasn't really doing much. He wasn't landing much. Sergio didn't look in danger. But if you look at the Curtis Stevens fight with Toriano Johnson, it was a back and forth fight. Curtis Stevens was in it, still in some rounds, some close rounds, but overall he was losing the fight. So some people just throw around terms in boxing like he was being dominated. He wasn't being dominated. He didn't look as good as I anticipated him to look, but he wasn't being dominated. He still was letting his hands go in spots, and he was still looking good. It's just Toriano Johnson had this relentless, insane, insane um, amount of pressure, and he was winning the rounds, point blank. So when you come to the stoppage, again, you run that risk if you have unanswered punches in succession. Watch uh, John Molina Jr. versus Antonio DeMarco. John Molina Jr., you got to know what to do in those clutch moments to let the no, let the ref know that you're still in the fight and you want more time. You know what I mean? You got to buy yourself time, if you will. And it just comes from experience. Another fight, Brandon Rios versus Mike Alvarado in the first fight. When Alvarado was hurt, he's just on the ropes, just taking punishment unnecessary. No one's going to watch you take unnecessary shots. And, and the thing with boxing is, I don't know how many of you guys know in terms of stoppages. When you take a beating, it's over, it's like, what really damages you, not necessarily just like if, if I'm in fighting someone in the first round, they knock me out in the first round, then I'm knocked out. But when you take a continual beating and you take continual flush shots over the course of time, that's when it becomes more destructive because your brain starts to swell and that's when you don't recover. I.e., you watch the Mike Perez fight with Magomed Abdusalamov. He was taking shots for the entire fight. You know what I mean? You're, you're talking about guys who aren't really imploring much of a defense. It's just relentless, come forward pressure. They're not moving their head. And no matter how well it looks like they're taking these shots, it could still hurt. Some people just have an amazing poker face. You know what I mean? Some people could just take punishment. Like in Gulo, he was getting fucked up by Canelo. He was getting rocked and taking hellacious shots that would have knocked other people out. But in Gulo, he's tough. Same thing with Toriano Johnson, it looks like. He's tough. So just because he's taking those shots doesn't mean he likes it. Just because he doesn't look like um, they're having an effect doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. You know what I mean? So it's that continual pounding that even if he's losing rounds, he's still taking shots from a heavy hitter in Cur Curtis Stevens. So come the 10th round, it's, it's like you can argue with the stoppage, and I to a degree I see, but overall I don't think it was a bad stoppage because he didn't, he just took too much unnecessary, unanswered punishment after that first big shot. And you got to do something. Take a knee, do something. Like when Ruslan was swarming Timothy Bradley. Timothy Bradley, being a veteran, he knew to took a knee. 
or he knew to take a knee in the 12th round. You know what I mean? And that's how the game goes. So it's not an egregious stoppage like Carl Frotch versus George Groves, in my opinion. And if you look at that fight, George Groves was also winning the fight. And he was in a headlock, and Carl Frotch wasn't really... He was just, like, kind of swinging at his back and stuff, and then the ref waved it off. So I I don't think the Curtis Stevens, Toriano Johnson um, fight was that controversial. I think some of you guys look for controversy, and you look for reasons to be upset. And in fact, the matter is, Torian Johnson, Toriano Johnson had held a good account of himself. He definitely earned a lot of fans, including myself. I didn't know much about him. Andre Berto was one of the people that said, this dude's rugged. He, You know what I mean? This, this motherfucker's tough. And he showed that tonight. He showed he has a chin. He can take a fight. And he could be in some interesting matches in the future. And like I said, in his loss, I think he gained more fans than just simply losing. Like, you didn't... You, you made Curtis Stevens work for it. You out like out hustled him and you were overwhelming him and it was just a solid performance but when you come to the stoppage i understand it because from a boxing standpoint you're like okay he was winning he was on the on the on the um judges scorecards he should have been ahead which i don't dispute any of that but when you take that big monster shot then you start backpedaling towards the ropes and you're not fighting back you're not you have unanswered punches it's just it's only a matter of time you gotta take a knee hold your opponent do something if you want to still be in the fight. And most of the time, more often than not, the reason they don't is because they are removed from their senses and they're trying to gather themselves. It's just like, why do you think they say don't drink and drive? They say don't drink and drive because when you drink, it impairs your judgment. You know what I mean? Your ability to hit the brake because you're drunk. You know what I mean? Your your senses aren't fully there and you're not as cognizant as you are when you're, you're sober. Same thing with boxing. You take that big ass shot and you've been taking shots all night and it rocks you and it dazes you. It's hard for you to get a clear understanding of what's going on. You know what I mean? That's why some dudes get knocked out and they black out. They forget what the fuck happened. They forget where they were and, oh, hey, what time is it? Like, you know what I mean? They don't know shit. So, again, that sustained beating is the worst. But Toriano Johnson, he gained a lot of fans. I would definitely, definitely want to see a rematch because he was winning. And it was a good fight. And you could say it's controversial because he might have been able to finish on his feet. And it looked like Curtis Stevens needed a knockout to win. But everything's a what if at this point. Either way, it was a great fight. It was a hell of a fight. I thoroughly enjoyed myself. And perhaps Curtis Stevens um, maybe underestimated Toriano Johnson. And I asked him this when I interviewed him. I said, what's it like to prepare for a guy that you have little data on? And to me, he, he, he if you just go watch the interview and hear what he said. But to me, it, it sounds like he might have underestimated him. It might, he might have... Um, like just as expected his power to do the trick. And you look at guys that are known for power, like the Matisse's and watch Matisse versus Danny Garcia. When somebody is tough and bring the fight to you and has power of their own and a chin, sometimes that frustrates and it discourages you because you're like, damn, I'm used to knocking motherfuckers out in the first round, maybe the third, if they can last a third. And then all of a sudden my power is not doing the trick. It discourages you. And Again, this is just a total barbaric fight. I don't even re really remember many jabs being thrown. Like, it wasn't a technical. It was fucking savagery. Like, I could probably count on one hand how many jabs between both of them that they fucking threw. So, just hellacious stuff. I'm definitely um, going to reach out to Curtis Stevens, try to talk to him, get his impression of it. Um, you could tell by his body language after the fight that he was just kind of like, ooh, felt he could have did better. It looked like he hurt his arm because he was like kind of shaking his arms. It looked like they were heavy. And again, you can't let someone punish your body and you can't underestimate anyone. That's why we love the sport of boxing because anything can happen. But that 10th round was insane. And Toriano Johnson, like I said, gained new fans. Took a wicked, wicked fucking shot. Um, that left hook was just nasty, disgusting. And I, again, I don't, I don't think it was all that controversial. I think Toriano Johnson held a good account of himself, but where the buck stops is when he took that left hook, just being too proud and too prideful. Um, and then he didn't hold, he didn't clinch, and he didn't answer those punches. And same thing with Curtis Stevens. I think he was being prideful early in the fight. He interviewed with me and talked to other people, and he was like, yo, you know what I mean, my power, he says my power is overrated. That might have fucked with him mentally. And he went out there on a mission. And that's the worst thing to do when you go out there underestimating someone or you go out there looking for the knockout. Don't look for the knockout. Utilize your jab, utilize boxing, wait for that shit to come. And I think he kind of 
let pride get in the way. And by that time, he was already being out hustled and out gunned and beat to the punch and just kind of bullied against the ropes by Toriana Johnson, a fighter he didn't know much about. And then when he seen that he was in a real fight, some of his steam might have been taken out of his punches because he was letting Toriano Johnson bulldog him. So he was fighting in spurts. Other than that, like I said, hell of a fight. I'll reach out to Curtis Stevens. Shout out to Main Events. Let me know what you guys think. If you saw the fight, if you didn't, go check my Instagram for that. Let me know if you think it was a premature stoppage based on that 15-second clip. As always, hate, comment, or subscribe. Till next video, is Ego signing off. Mm -hmm.